and uh, I'll hand over now to uh, Paula and June to talk about um, the ePortfolios at uh, Northampton College. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm June Sadler. I'm the Delivery Manager at Northampton College for Work-Based Learning. I um, just thought we'd start off by telling you a little bit about what we do and why we are looking at ePortfolios. Um, we currently, in our business centre, deliver apprenticeships, full cost training, and what was the um, traditional MBQs in the workplace. Um, we have about 500 apprentices and 500 full cost on programme at any one time. Um, and we cover ni roughly 19 different vocational areas. Um, altogether, we have approximately 31 delivery staff. Um, and we're working over four different awarding bodies, um, such as City and Guilds, IMI, ABC, um, and ILM. Hi, I'm Paula Schofield, the Quality and Development Manager at Northampton College. The reason that we've come to sort of share this experience with you is that we started last year around September looking uh, introduce well before September looking at introducing ePortfolios. And one of the difficulties that we'd had was that the college had already had experience, a negative experience. So we needed to make sure that what we were looking for met the needs of our assessors and the college and we were going to implement it quite successfully because of the amount of money that we were going to be looking at. What would help us to just sort of get started really is if we just did a quick poll to have a look and see where you're coming from, whether you're an FE or a private provider to start off with. So can you just indicate whether you're A or B for us, please? You've got eight responses at the moment. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I can see that the majority of you then are from FE. <coughs> Could you also just indicate on the next bit for us whether you are doing just apprenticeship, just full cost, or whether you're doing all three, please? We're going to put up another one for you. So A, B, or C. Okay. I think the majority of you are coming through then on both. And that's the same as us, and that was quite a large consideration really when we were looking at ePortfolios as to what we wanted to pick and the choices. The reason why we were deciding to go for it in the first place was because as we run separate within the college, we do not we're not integrated within other curriculum delivery areas. So, and how we deliver is we're called a business centre and all the apprenticeship qualifications are pulled into our area and that's why we have 30 assessors. Uh, currently we have an X amount of trackers then and these trackers were all on spreadsheets so unfortunately we couldn't report off these and it meant that information had to be inputted by people within our business centre rather than coming from our central MIS system. So when we were looking at it we were finding that it wasn't particularly efficient um, and we wanted to be more efficient in the way that we practiced as well with our assessors because we have um, students all over the country because of the vocational areas that we offer. And the trackers, they were often um, very localised, so we had different information on different ones. So the monitoring of the progress of these students wasn't particularly good um, in all areas. Some were different, some were better than others. And we also wanted to be able to pull off um, specific management reports in a, a far more detailed way, looking to make sure that all our, all our students have allocated assessors and how their progress meets um, with the, the time elapsed on the program. Um, so we wanted a system that would allow us to, to look at that in detail. 
What we were hoping as well is that we'd obviously have some cost savings and we could perhaps increase caseloads because if we've got a number of students on the ePortfolio system, it would mean that our assessors could have more students on their caseload. It also meant that we wouldn't spend so much money on mileage. I mean, we have some students that are doing the electrical techno qualification that are all over the country. So trying to meet up with them um, on a timely basis to uh, support them with their qualification has proved quite difficult. So this is one of the areas why we were sort of looking at it. I think what we sort of like to sort of think about next really is just another quick part. I'm sorry if I'm shouting at you. I'm sitting under the mic, so I may be coming across really loud and getting on your pip at the moment. I do apologise. The next poll is purely because we just wanted to see where you're at as individuals, you know, do you know anything about ePortfolios? Have you had one before? Have you had a demo? Have you done sort of basic research? Just to sort of give us an idea really when we're talking at you, we're not teaching you to suck eggs really. So can you have a look um, and see whether you've sort of had a demo, you've researched on the internet, whether you've done a discussion with another provider, whether you've actually bought a system already, or at the moment you're just thinking about it and not quite sure and that's why you've sort of linked in really to this session. Right, I can see Mary's using one file, Maharancy Schools. Okay, thank you, Mary. Right, there's quite a few then that have done nothing at all at the moment, and six that have bought a system. Might we use learning systems and we're looking at others? Okay. We've had experience when we did our. Um, initial looking at different portfolio areas, we actually decided that we wanted to ask at least three or four different providers to come in and present their systems to us. We had a number of questions which we sort of put on a checklist as a rating really, so things that we definitely wanted to sort of know something about so we could see whether the systems would fit our needs because I don't think one system fits all and it really depends what qualifications you're offering how many of them and whether you're doing apprenticeships or for cost. And I think that was quite a big consideration for us, wasn't it, Jane? It was. We we wanted to make sure that we had a system that was visually appealing to all, both the assessors, the IVs, the EVs, um, and of course the students. Um, and that was quite easy to use, to log into, to be able to download what you needed to download and to feed back. Um, the planning was quite very important to us. Um, we plan long term, medium term, short term, as I'm sure you all do. Um, so we wanted to have that facility on there. We we'll just use some of our own resources, our own planning sheets, um, as well as use the feedback sheets that came as part of the package. Um, Resources itself, we want, as I say, we wanted to download some of our own resources, but some of the packages also offered um, a suite of resources in there, whether it be um, chat rooms or whether it be actual um, information in different vocational areas. The other sort of big thing for us was how the provider was going to support and train our staff. Um, and we sort of learnt really from sort of past experience that it was quite important that our staff were trained to a specific level and what the costs were going to be because some of the people that came forward to do the demonstrations were happy to do a one-off training session with our staff and any other training that we were going to need was going to be at a cost. And we found with our implementation, which you'll see on another slide soon, was that they had their initial training um, but that wasn't sufficient and we've had to do a lot more to support our staff to be able to not only track students but to do the portfolio as well. So that was quite a big consideration for us and how they were going to be supported. Yeah. I think that's really really a big important part of, of whatever you decide is the training. Um, as Paula said, we had to have several sessions both with the provider, we've also had to log into chat rooms, there are also paper based um, training packages um, that we needed to look at and it wasn't just a case of doing a one off session with, with assessors, it, it's taken several sessions and several, in several different ways for us to be able to get to where we are at the moment. The other sort of things that we were looking at then, what our needs were, were the online, offline apps and internet access because I don't know about you but we've got a number of areas where we've got black spots um, and 
we didn't really want this as an excuse for students not being able to access ePortfolio. So we wanted to know what they've got to support us enabling that to happen. We're also looking at all the different types of feedback, feedback and paperwork bits that June was saying earlier. We wanted to have some of our own on there because a lot of the systems that we've looked at um, obviously did assessment planning aspects and uh, observations and feedback, but it wasn't in as much depth as, as we liked to do it. So some of our paperwork we wanted to actually upload onto the system and use that instead of what they had. Um, I can see that Marie is Maria, sorry, Marie, has put in about Mahara. Um, she said, is there a reason why people have moved away from Mahara? I don't really know the answer to that one. I mean, we initially, when we were looking, I'm not going to sort of sell the portfolio that we were with, but we actually looked at Maytas, OneFile, Learning Assistant, Smart Assessor, and a number of other portfolios just to see what they were offering, really. And the people that came and did the presentation, we were also judging them as to their knowledge of the system as to gauge of what sort of support we were going to get when we signed up with them. Yeah, and also the knowledge of the different award and bodies, because we, we, as I say, we use four different ones, so we needed to make sure that they were aware of the different requirements within the different award and bodies and how they lay out um, different qualifications. And um, looking at the reports, we wanted to be able to pull off, and this was particularly from an apprenticeship point, apprenticeship point of view, health and safety reports, um, le reports on when learners are, are due and when they're likely to have gone out of funding. We wanted to look at GCSE certificates, um, whether we had them, whether we were still chasing them, um, as well as, uh, as I said before, the caseloads and the time elapsed against the progress of the student. Um, we really wanted the provider to work with us as well. I mean, we, we consider ourselves quite a big provider because of the number of qualifications that we do and the different awarding organisations we work with. And we were finding that all the systems that we were looking at one just wouldn't fit totally what we needed. So we wanted the provider to be able to adapt some of the things that they were doing to work with us. And if that was available, then how much was that going to cost or would that be part of our collaboration? Um, we're also looking at ease of access for external verifiers and employers, whether there's any system notifications and how would, you know, how would this interact, how could we interact on it. It was also really important to us that it would be quite easy for people to use. Um, and what we've found, sorry, can we go on to the next slide, what we was found from an implementation point of view since then was that there's been some difficulties with the training that we initially accessed because although all our assessors have laptops and phones that they use and they're quite conversant with those, actually getting onto a system they found quite difficult, especially if they were only tracking initially because we decided that because we had so many students that we would put all students on as a tracking um, and only pilot certain areas, so we would to pilot X amount of students in the electrotechnical area, in business studies, and tackle the assessor and verifier awards because it was just an easy way uh, of getting quick feedback. Um, yeah, so we piloted in specific areas, um, which were the areas that we had students um, at a distance, such as our electrical areas, and those areas that we felt students would be able to have easy access to the internet, um, such as our business admin and our ITQ students. Um, we encouraged leads within our, um, our own centre, so we have specific people who are, if you like, our ambassadors, they lead the process, they, they are um, very enthusiastic about taking this forward and they disseminate their knowledge and how they have implemented implemented it to other people in the centre and that's working very well. We have swap-in sessions um, for people to be able to come and ask questions that they need. We also, with the leads, um, I am the, the main person that speaks to the provider um, about difficulties or things that we need, but our leads talk to them about the vocational needs. So if there's something that doesn't look quite right on the system, they converse with the leads rather than with six or seven different members of staff or even just myself who I don't perhaps know the qualifications so in-depth as they do. And it means that we're bottoming out problems quite quickly now, which we wasn't initially. Um, from a cross-college support point of view, what we have done is we have linked it up to our MIS system, which we initially thought was going to be 
really easy. <laughs> Jean's laughing in the background. It's taken us months to sort. Um, and we needed a really good um, support mechanism from the, the individual within the college that was our MIS lead because he's had to produce a specific code for us to enable anything that goes on to the QL to go straight into Smart Assessor so that we don't have any difficulties with the data. But it's taken months. That's been really difficult and that's probably been our, our hardest um, point to overcome really. Um, as I say, specific codes had to be written and then they had to be changed and then changed again. Um, so it, it's not an easy thing to link it and I know a lot of colleges are not linked to the MIS system. So that's something that you really do need to think about. Um, we wanted to make sure that what our MIS system said also was the same on, on Smart Assessor. Um, so you do need to think about that one. Um, we have focus groups, um, which as I said before, we've had the college leads. We have groups which, which are a support mechanism, if you like, um, that we get together uh, periodically and we be able to disseminate good practice, talk about what issues we've got, any problems we've got, how we've overcome them. So again, that's another support me mechanism for our staff. Um, I noticed that um, Mary has been talking about a lot of support needed for, for the staff implementing it with the students. Um, with the system that we use, they have, um, they've actually been and they've done some support with the students as well. So we've had the students into college, um, the provider has come along and shown them how to use it. We have also got, the, there's various chat rooms on there that they can go on and they can ask questions and there's, there's videos. Uh, that they can look at and see how to actually um, download their own evidence. We're also currently producing some very easy step-by-step -step flow charts. I mean, the provider that actually did give us some handbooks, but handbooks can be quite difficult to follow sometimes. And people just want an easy, you press this button, you press that button, and this is what it will do. So the quality team are currently producing some uh, flow charts to enable students and assessors and verifiers to quite easily have a very quick reference if they've forgotten how to do something. Because unless they're using it on a daily basis, they quite quickly forget some of the skills. Um, the last slide um, are just things that arose for us, really, things that we perhaps hadn't considered that in retrospect we, we perhaps should have done. Um, one of them was about ALS and how we get additional learning support on the system because they're not in within any of the portfolios. And when we're doing a full framework report, which is what another good reason for the portfolios that we get management reports on not only caseloads but out of funding and the support. And we've recently had an Ofsted visit that was very much focused on if somebody was having ALS, was it making a difference? were they achieving. So we're sort of working hard to get that incorporated into our system. The other thing that arose was because we walk with, work with a lot of different awarding organizations, our assessors are used to different layouts and the portfolio that we purchased wasn't meeting the needs of everybody. So we've had to make sure that it, it can be adapted, which is why it's taken us so long to get everybody on there. It's also about assessor expectations. We've had to say to some assessors, well, it's going to look different. You're going to have to work slightly differently. Um, and we had the pilot group run. And what we've decided now is that across the business centers, that 50% of all students need to go onto an e-portfolio system. We decided not to go down the 100% route because we found that there's some students that just won't be able to access the resources necessary. There's some students that really don't want to do an e-portfolio and we don't want to be turning them away because we've had students come to us that were initially going with a different provider because they don't want to do e-portfolios and we didn't want to sort of lose those. So we're sort of trying to move it in a different directions really. Um, the timeline for implementation for us was quite unrealistic as well. We were hoping to get everything up and running and hunky-dory quite quickly. By like Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah. But it didn't quite happen that way. We found in sort of found for the sort of now that the track is working it's quite well and we've got people on the system and we've sorted out the code. So now it's just about getting more students on the system and getting some feedback from them about ease of use. Because a lot of our assessors are already using email and they're getting students to email them uh, pieces of work and they are giving them feedback that way. So doing it via ePortfolio, you know, just makes it an easier system. I can see now that we've we've run over time. I don't want to. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Keep, keep going if you've got more to say. Um, 
So I guess I hope that some of those things has sort of helped. I don't know whether anybody else has got any um, questions. Really, spaces as well as a smart assessor. Not quite sure what you mean by that. No. I mean, the college does use Moodle um, as their VLE. We tend not to use that under work based learning. We, we, we concentrate on the smart assessor and using their resources. We've also, um, we're not using Moodle at all on the, if they're using ePortfolios, we're attaching everything they need um, as activities and resources to that system. Yeah, the, as we said, the resources for the delivery of the content can be attached to Smart Assessor. You can put resources there specific to one student, or you can put it on for a whole group of students and ask them all to, to um, complete that. So it, what, it, it is a way of delivering content and theory rather than just assessing. Um, that wasn't something that sort of came up in our recent Ofsted. Sorry, I have often, had Gordon said has often got a view on students being able to opt out of an e-portfolio. Um, to be honest with you, Ofsted didn't really ask us a great deal about the e-portfolio system that we were using um, at that point. I think it's because we'd only got it on a, on a um, still in trial, trial really. for the basis, so that they didn't really push us for that. Although we offered to take them through the system and go through really what our strategy was for using it. But I think, I mean, with regards to opting out, um, I don't really think it was an issue. Um, you know, we're meeting with learning needs here that some of them do not have internet access very easily, whether it be at work or home. So we were at, we actually given them the option, um, which can only really be seen as, as a positive. Can I just ask what, what the what the um, staff feel about it after a, a number of months in, in operation? Are they, are they getting comfortable with it? Because this is always this is yeah. always an issue, isn't it? Well, we thought we were going to have a big sight on our hands purely because that a lot of them have had experience before and it was a poor experience, mm. to be honest. And also, it's using different technology and they've got to learn to work differently. Mm. We have had a few areas that, that weren't keen to start off with, and that was care, child care, and, and sort of hairdressing because of historic reasons. I mean, hairdressing now have become our superstars. Mm. Um, they've all asked for iPads. We've sort of purchased some iPads for them to use because they're doing... Um, uh, delivery through that or will be doing that soon as well as this and motor vehicle have picked up the challenge. Uh, Childcare are a little bit slower but they are sort of about to get into it and I think you know we've had all the different reasons as to why they can't do it and so now because they've had to track students in that way that you know it meant they're doubling at work so they're sort of changing their, their yeah. thoughts really yeah. Yeah. from what they do. Yeah. It's natural so process. It's getting, it's getting accepted yeah. slow. Yeah. Yes. It yeah. is slow. It's like I guess it's like any any new introduction, you know. It, it, it picks up gradually, doesn't it, as people see the advantages of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is. And I think you've just got to make sure your support systems are in place. So we've still got drop ins going on. Um, up until after Christmas, we've also got training sessions, um, and I'm actually going to do another IQA support training session, so to reinforce um, areas where I know people are having difficulties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, has anybody else got any questions out there? Um, any, anything else? If you want to put it in the chat pane, otherwise, um, I think we'll draw this this part of the session to to a close. Just give you a minute or two to think of anything you might. Okay, we'd just like to say thank you very much for sort of listening to us, really, and we hope you've, it's been some bits of interest to you. If there is anything else that you'd like to sort of catch up with and have a chat with us or to sort of go through anything, if you, even if you want to come over and see us with our system, because sometimes it helps to see a system in place and how it's working, uh, we're quite happy to do that um, if you want to get in contact with us. Yes, yeah, you're very welcome. Um, I'm sure um, Phil will be able to give you any details of where we are. Yeah, the details will go up as usual on on our Insight Moodle pages to uh, for, as a as a record of this session. So a little bit of recording and and uh, contact details for for Paul and June. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks ever so much for that. That was good. That was really, really interesting, and um, I'm, I'm sure um, everybody out there really found found that uh, useful. Um, it's always difficult buying a new bit of, of kit, a new bit of software or technology or whatever because you don't quite know whether it's going to fit your purposes and, and um, 
and the offer to actually go and see see one uh, in operation. I think is uh, one that I would be wanting to take up if I was uh, thinking of buying an e-portfolio anyway. Okay, so thanks. Um, now then, just while we uh, swap over, and we do seem to be having a bit of difficulty getting Matt, um, who's um, supposed to be joining us from Portland College, but he doesn't seem to be there on our list at the moment. So um, I'm just going to talk you through some e-portfolio demonstrations, because again, uh, I was just saying the, the, uh, the difficulty is seeing them in operation and, and knowing whether they fit your particular needs. Um, and there are a number of um, e-portfolio uh, demonstrations around. Because uh, of the time, we haven't got time to go through all of these, but um, the, the details again will be up on um, will be up on our uh, uh, Moodle Insight uh, pages, uh, so that you can go and see that. Um, so one of the things to talk to, to bring to your attention is um, is Spencer Oakes, who's a teaching and learning coach at Loughborough, uh, and also teaches on their sports program. And he's made a screencast demonstrating how he's used Mahara on the BTEC National Diploma in Sport. He asked students to write their, ass their assignments uh, on their e-portfolio e and embed their assignments with multimedia resources found on the web. And he saw this as a valu valuable stepping stone towards effective referencing of sources. Um, his, um, his video uh, you'll be able to find on our um, uh, uh, Moodle pages. Uh, it's on a YouTube, so that, that, that would be worth a look, I think, to, to uh, Somebody talk through how they use they're using Mahara because there was a question there was a question earlier in the in the session on on Mahara. Um, thank you, Gordon. He's put this put the link up there. Um, going on to another example, Lucy Peck, who works for Futures Nottingham, has been heavily involved in the development of Passport Folio, and um, she's uh, she's put up some information there. Uh, it's a free resource for all the learners and helps them develop employability skills and other activities such as building a CV. Uh, Lucy's created a presentation to demonstrate what Passportfolio is all about. And again, I think Gordon, yes, is, is put it, well, that's the link to Passportfolio. The, uh, there's a slideshow presentation as well, um, which uh, tells you, which has Lucy's presentation about what, what uh, pass, how she uses Passportfolio. Um, now, I think we have a technical glitch because I don't think Matt has, um, has Kevin, come on in. Tell me what's happening. Uh, hi, Phil. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, Matt is uh, having problems getting in to collaborate um, uh, from Portland College, so unfortunately he sends his apologies. He won't be uh, able to make it today. Uh, what we'll perhaps try and do is um, a little bit like Spencer and Lucy done now, create uh, a video or some resources to uh, add in to the, um, we'll put it onto the Moodle with all the rest of the resources after after today's session, but uh, apologies, uh, uh, it doesn't appear that Matt will be able to join us today. Okay, thanks Gary, that's a, that's a shame, um, because he was going to he was going to uh, talk us through his, um, his uh, e-portfolio that he uses as Paul at College. Um, but perhaps we can get a, a screencast of it or a, a video of it to uh, to put on the Moodle page to show you then. So um, thank you very much for listening. That's that's all from from about e portfolios. Just to bring to your attention one or two other things um, before you before you dash off for lunch. Um, um, this is a week full of uh, um, uh, insight webinars um, and the ones that are coming up um, in the future.